come. Let me go across to Ambassador Atul Keshab, President of US India Business Council, joining us on the program. Ambassador Keshab, uh, how would you define this victory? What went right for Donald Trump? Because this was a election that was uh, going to be won by razor margins in any case. But it has been a clear victory and verdict in favor of Donald Trump. Where do you think he gained and where do you think the Democrats fell short? Well, thank you, Parisha. First of all, I think we need to be really clear that this was a big victory for democracy. You know, there have been a lot of obituaries written about American democracy and America's well-being. And yet our economy keeps growing. We're a $27 trillion economy. And we have just had a fairly orderly and fairly peaceful uh, election with a free and fair vote. And there is no nomenclatura or central committee that decides our outcomes. It's the American people. So this is a reflection of the strength of American democracy. And that is good not only for America, it is good for the entire world and critically good for democracy. Right. Uh, do you now expect India will purchase more from the United States in terms of equipment, in terms of technology? We recently concluded a multi-billion dollar drone deal. Now, when you have in Trump, a president who is extremely transactional. Do you expect more such deals to follow? If there needs to be strategic alignment, strategic concessions, then will Trump expect India to buy more? Well, first of all, I think it's very clear that President Trump and Prime Minister Modi have had and continue to have a very strong relationship. I also get the very clear sense that there is a very high regard for India and for what India represents and the fact that it is the world's largest democracy. Uh, you know, I worked uh, during the uh, Galwan crisis in the corridors of government, and I recall how the Trump administration rushed uh, critical elements and information and drones themselves to India uh, in that moment of great need. And so I think that you have to understand that there's already a very strong track record of collaboration and friendship uh, between uh, the United States and India through bipartisan administrations, and that will likely continue. But I would also say that the American people have given the pres pre President Trump a mandate, and that mandate includes working to ensure American strength and well-being. So you're going to see some expectations on the part of the new administration, and I think if India and friends in India and the government of India can help manage and meet those expectations, uh, it will uh, probably unleash an even stronger relationship. Ambassador Keshav, what would be those uh, expectations, considering that Trump has come back stronger, now that he has a second term, he may want to follow on those pro promises even harder? So first of all, I think that he has been really clear that he wants America to be as strong as possible. We do have some economic issues. We do have uh, some political issues. We do have some social and cultural issues that we've got to work through. But he also has talked at length about how he views relations with the rest of the world and how he views the importance of American economic uh, um, uh, strength. And so India has an opportunity here. If you recall, in the uh, last days of the first Trump administration, India and the U.S. were working toward the possibility of a really important and consequential trade deal. Now, I think this is an opportunity for policymakers in Delhi. They have already got very strong uh, regard and respect between Prime Minister Modi and President Trump. You know, the world needs the great democracies to get closer together. The world needs the high trust ecosystem of countries to get stronger, uh, including on things like critical technology. If India and the United States can validate the concerns of the American people as reflected by this election and the concerns articulated by uh, soon to be President Trump again, then I think there is an opportunity for some real ambition in U.S.-India relations, including on trade, that would help both of us strategically, economically, technologically to go to the next level. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you about uh, the H-1B partnership, uh, the the student visas, we've been the biggest beneficiary of both these programs. Do you expect uh, Trump to probably reduce uh, the quota for Indians, so to say? Well, there's an old saying in Washington that personnel is policy. So let's see whom President Trump will appoint to the various jobs to take forward these policy questions. Uh, and we'll have a better sense then. This is, of course, just hours after his election victory. But 
the candidate and the former president have been very clear about <clears throat> the need for uh, adjustments to American immigration policy to ensure that skilled legal immigration continues because it is an engine of innovation and economic strength for our country. And so I think that there's a, yet again an opportunity for India and other uh, countries that want to engage in a pragmatic manner to try to find a good way through this that helps advance America's interests and America's well-being, even as it also helps take care of India's well-being. In that sort of true partnership, the U.S. and India can actually get a great deal done together in a very positive way. Hmm. My final question would be about the Russia-Ukraine war and Israel. Uh, what would be the level of support to uh, both uh, Ukraine and Israel by the Donald Trump administration? Would he want to wind down these wars as soon as possible? Well, these are um, matters that involve other players as well. I mean, the Russians get a vote and Hamas and uh, all of them get a vote. So who knows how these events will, um, you know, evolve. But what I can say is that deterrence and the sense of strength of the United States is a critical element in how these conflicts do become resolved. And, you know, the president campaigned very clearly on a, a desire to ensure American strength and vitality. And, um, you know, if you ask some of the Arab partners of the United States and Israel, they felt like the Abraham Accords greatly enhanced the strategic equation in the Middle East for them. So let's see what happens in Trump too. Let's see whom he picks to lead policy issues uh, in those parts of the world in Trump too. And of course, always let's wish the best of luck for the United States, because when America is strong, it's not only good for us, it's good for countries like India that are friends and like-minded. It's good for democracies everywhere. So I wish uh, the president-elect the best of luck, he and his team, uh, to try to address these very, very difficult issues in a way that uh, brings peace, uh, brings stability and happiness, and ensures American strength and the strength of all like-minded. All right. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kesha, for joining us on the program with that interesting conversation. That uh, brings us uh, to the end of this special broadcast. But don't go anywhere. Our special coverage of the U.S. elections continues on CNBC TV 18.